How's it going, bud? Welcome back to Dead Stay Reanimated with me, Noble. I tweaked the sound just a little bit again, just to be safe. Uh, once again, let me know if this is okay, if I need to go a little lower or whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure that the sound isn't too overpowering. But, oh man, I didn't realize I'm down to 5.3 gallons. I really do need to head back. We might actually have enough fuel to get back to the shelter. I looked around for a minute when I went there, and it's full of rogue soldiers. Number one, they're soldiers in combat armor with rifles that could tear me to pieces. Number two, they're not really bothering anybody. So, <laughs> yeah, I was like, best not to uh, entice the locals, if you know what I mean. So, let's head on back. Gallon's going down quickly. Three, two, ah, oh, we made it. Now we'll just do a little harvesting to make sure we get some fresh food going back. Huzzah. We don't need any of that. Let's see. We need to take some fishing rods and go out fishing. We'll take the horses to do that, though. <laughs> no need to waste any more of our fuel than we have to. Twenty-nine, twenty-five. <laughs> We've uh, wasted more fuel than that. <laughs> Sir Charleston is just ready for war. I mean, look at that. He's got the uh, strength and the accuracy increase. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess go ahead and let me uh, take care of this. I'll be back in just a minute. All right. So we got our teams rearranged. Not our physical fighting team, but everybody else is... Uh, been outfitted correctly with uh, jobs to do. We need to get somebody on the apocalypse armor, but everybody that can do it's busy with other jobs. So first we need to change the horse, because uh, we're down to our last two gallons of gas. I completely forgot to grab a fishing pole. Oopsie doodles. Hmm. Roadkill, possible ambush. Let's just go to that. Why not? We got time. <laughs> huh? Hey, you guys. Now, I did grab the uh, bow and arrow, but I didn't have time to arm it yet, so... I guess now is better than nothing, right? Good, good. No, you die. Yeah, I just got a couple thugs. One with a pistol, one with an axe. Mr. Machete over here. Not Mr. Miyagi, Mr. Machete. Now, I switched uh, good old Vic over to uh, the SPAS-12 shotgun with a uh, <laughs> laser sight. It's more powerful, lighter, and uh, has a slightly higher chance of critical hits, which is always nice. I can't touch you there, but I can touch you here. <laughs> I'll just stand right here. Don't mind me. I got bad news for you. I can still hit you. Because I forgot to change weapons. <laughs> Got the revolver's like, I'll stop you. No, Paul's gonna stop you. <laughs> oh, good times and great oldies. Remember, no means no. A little bit of food, not bad. We're gonna want to make sure everybody's ready for. Uh, this other guy here. Uh, one more step. Well, that didn't work. Hmm, it's gonna take six. That's not enough points, so we're just gonna pull you over here. He shoots the guy with the only bulletproof vest, the best one. 
and uh, <laughs> decides to miss. Yeah, we'll just get this wounded guy. And put him on the ground. Huzzah! Don't worry, guys. I'll beat his brains in. Pokemon. Almost dead. He's probably regretting his decision to fight us at this point. As has he. Look at that. We didn't get over our heavy decibels yet. Come on, Paul. You're a killing machine. Of course, I decided to send a message while I'm recording. Apologize. Alright, so. That's it for that, so let's see what the surrounded car had in it. Nothing! The last surrounded car we had had Paul in it. <laughs> so, you never know what's going to be in an abandoned car. Alright. Man, you know, I really don't want to pick this, but it is local food. That's too far away. Let's see if we can't harass some local uh, stuff and or find some more foodstuffs around here. Got back before 7 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> 8 o'clock is when we turn into a pumpkin, but 7 o'clock is uh, when we'll have one hour to basically use for however we please in the uh, job board. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, transfer some items over, see if there's anything I can force anybody to do against their will, such as, you know, start picking vegetables or something, I don't know. The 96 items turned into 93 parts. Hey, hey! There we go. Now we have enough material to start building some apocalypse armor. I went ahead and looked at uh, what it was going to take to... Uh, build the apocalypse armor and I was low on scrap I was like okay let me take the moment since I'm in here to go ahead and scrap you know a, <laughs> an actual probably half ton of items just to oh, there's somebody writ something sister okay all right in this day and see what kind of gripes our local town folk uh, would like to put off on us there Yes, please. Say nine gallons, 112 antibiotics. I just put one guy on making antibiotics, and now I look, I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. We got 112. Oh, well. Preserve food, one nine. So we're almost at 2,000 food. That's good. Food consumption, 75. Oh, let's see. Yeah, so we end up using all our fresh food. That's good. <laughs> There's a bit there. Hey, I'm sorry. Uh, I need a sec uh, before we discuss today's schedule. I realized today that I've been trying to occupy my time worrying about other people and just trying to push uh, thoughts about the consequences of all that's out in my mind. And today I started thinking about my daughter. Really thinking about her for the first time since this started. I'm hoping she's an adult and she was able to drive a car, fight zombies, and that kind of thing. Because otherwise, she's in trouble. Is she still out there in the place like this? Are people worrying about her uh, safety? Is it better where she is? You see, I, uh, I don't keep myself busy. I know I'm going to start wondering if I need to mourn her. Oh, that is sad. Yeah. That's what I was saying, you know. There's some things you can sit there and just hope from the bottom of your heart that, you know, everything is A-OK. -okay, and then you got to sit there and go, but what happens if it's not? And that's the thing that eats at people. Do you think anyone's out there? Is my daughter somewhere where everything's gotten better? Or is it a good uh, as it gets? I, I think it is. Uh, let's see. 
This little can't be bad all over. No till. Let's be more positive. I'd like to believe that too. Sorry, I know uh, we've got our own problems here, but I'll be fine. I agree. I mean, if let's say let's say you were on that plane ride, and this happened, your plane crashes, you got some burns and some injuries, but you wake up. <coughs> And you're in a completely different town. You, you are nowhere near your home. And your friends, your family, your neighbors, your loved ones, your ex and <clears throat> your kids or whatever. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat got a little scratchy there. Uh, you don't know anything about what's going on with them. Are they alive? Maybe in their part of the world, it's happy-go-lucky, hunky-dory. Everybody's sitting there going, man, it sucks to be in that area. Hey, did... um. Did insert your name here. Did did they fly over that area? Are they okay? I haven't heard from them. Or are they sitting there bundled up in a corner thinking, well, uh, insert name here is gone. What are we going to do? We have to survive without them. And do you think they can get on without you? Or, you know, do you have skills that be sitting there like, oh, man, I really wish, you know, you were here with me because we can actually survive this. No problem, you know? You know, you, you just worry about what they can do without you. I mean, even if the person is like a trained military, you're sitting there going, man, I hope blah, blah, blah is okay. Sure, they're, you know, freaking commando, and they could sit there and kick butt, you know, nine ways till Sunday. But, you know, you still sit there and worry about them, you know? And I, I feel for Davis in this situation. I mean, the man's in a wheelchair. He can't go uh, to where his daughter is. We don't know anything about the daughter. I mean, she could be in grade school, got evacuated in one of the shelters we haven't been to yet, or maybe she's an adult, kind of like uh, Anita Cass's uh, kid, who's the veterinarian who uh, does medical here. She was lucky enough to go get her daughter. She's probably the only one, besides the two sisters who one got murdered, uh, that has actually found a sibling or relative that got them to safety and got murdered. But anyway, yeah. Okay, Davis, I understand. Uh, let's see. We'll go with that one. Thanks. Anyhow, let's take a look at the inventory numbers. Um, no thank you. No! <laughs> no! Hmm. Oh, no. I know who they're going to implement. There's two people that come to mind immediately as people who they could implement as being the thief. The first one is our country bumpkin. You know, the, uh, I forget his name, I want to call him Ellis, but, you know, he's the he's the guy that's sitting there going, hitting on Priscilla. He's like, hey girl, how you doing? Yeah, I'm a stud, you should definitely date me. Oh crap, we got another one over here now. And then the other one is, um... Ulysses, I think this is his name, the uh, guy that Vic had the falling out with that was a former thief. You see where I'm going there. We got the country bumpkin who may be a drug addict, and then we have the uh, guy who was a former criminal. Either one of them is probably innocent. Knowing this game, I bet you they're both innocent. Uh, I'm going to think that either it's um, the Latina lady who has the, um, the bike, Maybe she took extra antibiotics if she wasn't feeling good. She was worried. Or maybe it was an actual robbery from outside the gate. Maybe somebody climbed the fence one night, got in, and stole our antibiotics. And we're sitting here blaming each other. You see what I'm getting at? So, let's see what happens. We don't have much to go on right now. I'm waiting for Vic to jump in. I've taken statements from people who were unaccounted during the... T oh, no. During the time the theft took place. I'll read you, read them back to you. Oh, shoot. Agro, I was on the roof smoking. If I really needed them that badly, I would have asked. I kind of agree. Agro, to me, has been somebody who, well, let's face it, we got laid. So, I mean, she's just somebody who comes up and says, hey, this is what's on my mind. I'm going to let you know what's going on. Ephraim, that's the guy I couldn't, I, I said Ulysses, I think, but I meant Ephraim. So anytime anyone steals anything, they automatically... Me, huh? Like I said, it's probably not Ephraim, simply because of the fact he's the red herring in the situation. You know if I did it, and I didn't. But if I did, you wouldn't even know anything was missing. Exactly. 
if he was a professional thief back in the day, he's not going to leave evidence to get caught. Oscar, now, like I said, his wife is infected, so there's a decent chance it's him, if it is anybody, because he may have been worried about her uh, infection. So, that's a possibility. To me, I've never even uh, given the impression that I would uh, do something like that. Can't believe he even asked me. Well, they're asking everybody, but yeah. Troy is the other one I said is probably a red herring, but is the other one uh, that I would think would be the high suspect. Man, someone stole some stuff? That's messed up, man. I could try and help him find some more. But yeah, I mean, you know, he could be addicted to, uh, you know, over-the-counter medications. We don't know. We only just found out Tony's missing. Dog. <laughs> Doug's been on night, literal night duty, walking around in, in his uh, armor like, I am the best knight in the whole village. I will protect everyone. And Sir What's-His-Face is like, good job, Sir Doug. <laughs> Take it to the zombies. <laughs> well, the demons, he called them. Why is everyone uh, blaming me for stuff? Everyone knows thieves aren't smart. That's why they they had uh, to turn on the crime. Or turn to crime. <laughs> Oh. Oh my goodness. Okay. Give me a minute just to think about the no the names. Like I said, Troy is if his wife was on here or him, I figured that would probably be the most likely suspect. But give me a minute to look over this real quick and just think about what it might be. Okay, so I'm down to two suspects just looking over this. I'm going to go ahead and call out Ephraim is not the suspect. Like I said, he's the red herring. I can give you that without a doubt. Agra, once again, she's open, she's honest. If she took him, she'd tell you. Easy. Oscar, on the other hand, and Troy, on the other hand, I forgot about Doug. Doug is not, because uh, Doug is smart. <laughs> Troy and Oscar are the only two that I uh, stand out as being possibilities. Troy could be a pill popper. He did get kicked out of the last group, and we don't know everything he did. So for all we know, he was caught stealing antibiotics ahead of time as well. Uh, and it, th though they're labeled as antibiotics, we don't exactly know what kind of pills they are. Uh, it very well could have been more than just antibiotics. We just know about the antibiotics in particular. And Oscar because of his wife. And I want to say Oscar is the other red herring. I know I said Troy, I think, was a red herring, but between Oscar and Troy, I have to go with uh, Troy because, as I mentioned before, Ephraim is a red herring, just straight out of the door red herring because there's no reason for him to take him in the sense that, uh, you know, like Oscar would have a reason to take him because of his wife. And that's why I think he's a red herring too. You know, you sit there and go, well, Ephraim's a criminal and Oscar's uh Wife is infected. Hmm, which one of these two? It's so obvious it can't be them. I think Troy's a pill popper. I think he's over there taking medications. Maybe he started up with some painkillers and he's moved up to these antibiotics just trying to do something. Or maybe he has reason. Maybe he's infected. We don't know about it. And after this event, it's going to be revealed that Troy was actually bitten, you know, X many days ago, you know, 20 days ago, we'll just say that, and he's infected. Now, once again, Doug and Agro, you know, they're they're not even red herrings. They're just filler. I have to go with Troy, and I'm probably going to regret it, but I'm going to choose Troy. Troy Cooper, you have been a, or Troy Cooper, you've been accused of a crime of theft. Do you have anything to say for yourself? It all, the other reason I brought this up was because of his response about saying, "Hey, I'll go help you find this person." You know, it, it seems like the best way to try to lure people away from uh, you is to say, hey, I'll help you. You know, hiding amongst the, the searchers is, you know, a safer place to be, you know. I, uh... Boom! I have something to confess. Yes! <laughs> I took those out of... Oh, gosh, I called it. <laughs> See, I got a bad cut. Oh, well, it wasn't what I thought. I thought he got bit or that he had a... Uh, well, actually, he might be lying. But I had a bad cut a while. Uh, I was out the other day. I didn't tell anyone since I didn't want to look weak. But the cut was long uh, looking worse 
so I knew I needed some, some of them antibiotics. But I didn't want to tell no one and let them uh, think it, I was uh, weak to do my job. I don't know if uh, they would let me and uh, have them. And damn, well, I didn't uh, want to lose my leg. I can see your point on this. And I'm sorry for accusing you of being a pill popper. <laughs> I actually feel bad now. <laughs> sure, he's a cartoon character, but I was like, he's a country boy, he might be into some narcotics, and he's trying to get his fix. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, uh, I mean, I, I knew that Ephraim was definitely not the suspect. And I knew that uh, Oscar's, uh, with his wife, had to be wrong, too, because it just stuck out too much as being obvious, possible red herrings. So I took him. But all this time, while you've been looking for uh, a thief, the gut was eating me up inside because I took way too many antibiotics and I actually might need to go to a doctor right now. I'm kidding. I kept thinking how sad mama would be at me. Anyhow, I took a, a few already, but here's the rest back. Thank you for your honesty, Troy. I'll leave it up to you to decide on the punishment, if any. Thank, uh, thank you for, uh, th that you think would be suitable here. Okay. I, I guess I kept trying to say thank instead of think. Honest or not, he, he still stole from us. And I think the best punishment we can give this situation like this is a ration of his food while he goes out and looks for more antibiotics. You know, that's not bad, but we might be able to do better. We'll see. I'll back you whatever you think's appropriate. He came clean, and there aren't uh, any major harm. Let's uh, not turn this into a spectacle. Yeah, we don't really need this a witch hunt. We literally had a murder like, what, a week and a half ago? Troy and stealing pills is not anywhere near that. I'm hoping you'll go easy on him, but you'll do what you have to. I'll support you. Stealing for others, that's fun. Stealing from your own, that's a crime. Now, I want to say Troy should have uh, received a beatdown, but Bubba's, t <laughs> but Bubba's tend to be fixed called. <laughs> I, know I shouldn't find that that funny, but I did. You got other ideas? I'm willing to hear them. I think Troy has done a brave thing and admitted to his mistake. Well, it wasn't a mistake. I mean, he just hoped he wouldn't get caught. We should forgive him for that crime. He was honest. We should give him a second chance. Well, I can't overlook a crime. Even if it wasn't honest, he should suffer some form of punishment. Let's say a whole week of reduced rations. It sends a message to the others, too. The ration thing, though, I, I wouldn't really want to punish him that bad. I mean, seriously, he's getting over an infection, and you want to take the food away that's going to help his body fight the infection? We'd be had to get more antibiotics in here in no time if that's the case. You know what I'd vote for. However, you have my support whenever you decide. It's time to make your decision. How do you wish to punish Troy? <laughs> Strap him onto the uh, wooden mule and lash him. Okay, he's good. <laughs> that sounded more kinky than I intended it to. I'm sorry. <laughs> he was honest with us. A petty theft. Exile from the shelter. Ooh, man. No one asked for that. Stealing a serious crime. No rations for five days. That's serious. No rations for five days. Yeah, this one and this one are a little too high for the crime. Punish for reduced rations. Four and one are the only two real ones. I'm going to go with this one. Simply due to the fact that he admitted to it and he's a good gardener. We need the good gardener. That's the final decision. No, no unaffiliated agreed to it. The sentence is decided. Troll will be forgiven for his crimes. I think it sends a wrong message, but maybe people appreciate your compassion. It's not to turn this into an ordeal. Uh, we got important matters to attend to. I'll back you up on this, but I think it's getting off easy. I think it says a lot about your compassion. That goes a long way, turning uh, this into a valuable society again. Well, I can't say I, I, all is great decisions. 
Thank you for your input. Meeting's over. At least we got the right person. I would have felt horrible if I had grabbed the wrong person. Like I said, the two red herrings were the two obvious, you know, choices. And I was like, that's why I sit there. I'm like, okay, this person, no, that can't be it. Morale increase, morale bonus, mood increase. Okay. Hello. Oh, hey there. I drew up a map for you of the community in the sweater. It was a walled community, a nice part of town. We almost moved there, but I felt the houses were too close together for my taste. <laughs> oh, the rich side of town. Hmm. Anywho, my point is that this place was probably prepared, and uh, the people there were wealthy. Hmm. Enough to buy supplies. I'm pretty sure we're bound to find a few stocked houses there. That sounds helpful, thank you. You're welcome. While you're busy with that, I'll try and figure out another place for us to investigate. Okay. And that's it. All right, so we'll go ahead and end this event here. Uh, so, thank everybody for stopping by and joining. I can pause it real quick. Uh, if you like it, then like, subscribe for future content. If you feel like it, leave a comment below with your thoughts and or opinions on this and other things. Uh... <laughs> Oh, man. That bubble thing still got me. Anyway, uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Take care. Be safe out there. See you next time.